Hello and welcome back to Pocket Rockets and today we're going to be taking a look at this Hobby Japan Subaru uh, WRX STIEJ20 Final Edition. It's quite a long name. So let me break it down. This is the WRX STI and the engine in it is the EJ, EJ20 and this is the Final Edition and we also have a EJ20 engine right here. So yeah, this is my first Hobby Japan uh, car, and uh, the reason that I haven't got a Hobby, uh, Hobby Japan model a little sooner is because people say that Hobby Japan cars don't roll, and it's very important for my cars to roll, so um, I didn't get it because it didn't roll, but when I saw this the other day, I was like, this looks too good to pass. So I bought one, and I'm not I'm not sorry at all. It I did modify it to roll, but it was really simple, so. Right. This is pretty much we got the uh standard expensive model collecting car packaging paper ac acrylic display case and this thing is actually really tight so you can't just prize it open like this you have to stick your nail in right here and kind of just go around the length of it just making the gap a little wider right here and now you could pop it off so yeah we have the car, which we're going to set on the back of there, and the engine, which we're going to look at first. All right, so this is the EJ20 engine, or at least I think it is, because it doesn't really say on the packaging, does it say? Hmm, let's see. With EJ, yes, the EJ20 engine is what powers this beast behind me. And, uh, damn, it's pretty small. Okay, so on... Speaking the truth, I have no idea what's going on here, but it looks pretty fancy. So, yeah, take it a genuine copy of the real EJ20 engine. All right, we're going to set that on the back of... You know what? I'm actually going to get my spinning... There we go. We're going to set this engine on the back of here. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Right, so now time for the car and screwdriver. Classic. Oh, yeah. It, oh, it says Hobby Japan down here. Nice. Right, screwdriver, unscrew the car from the, what's it called, the base. Here we go. Oh yeah, it does say EJ20 Final Edition in pretty nice font. Right, so this is the car itself, and let's put it on right here. So, I bought this car for 560 NT, which is about two times the, about 1.5 times the, uh, the price for a normal mini gt car and i i think it was worth it the um although it is plastic metal on plastic so metal metal body plastic base um the details are very very good and this is not my first wrx sti model and not the first this style this is actually the facelifted style so we have bigger just more aggressive features and a smaller headlight so this is the before the facelift, and this is actually my Tomiko one that I customized, so you can see new wheels, blah, 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 and the front I also customized a bit, but this is the pre-facelift one, so you can see that the grill down here is a little smaller, and the and the uh, upper grill is also, no, so yeah. The pre-facelift one was the bigger upper grill, smaller, smaller kind of intake right here, and the facelifted one was... The opposite, we got a smaller upper grille and a bigger intake, which I think makes the whole lot, whole, whole car, mispronunciation, whole car looks look a lot better. And of course, with the EJ20 engine, I mean, it would have been a lot better if I could put the engine in, like uh, the Yes Yo engine start Mitsubishi Evo, but that would just increase the price exponentially. So yeah, now we're going to actually get on with the details So move the spinning display right here and we're gonna put my we're gonna put my Tomica one back there just for reference right so the front very very detailed so we're gonna start from the wheels first so these wheels are I think the stock ones yeah I can see the Suba, Subaru logo or uh, as the J Japanese pronunciation Subaru so yeah we can see the Subaru logo right there and uh, I really like how there's like kind of pink all over the car so we have like Kind of pink accents here and kind of pink trims here just i know that pink is like the subaru kind of racing color which is really unique i mean not to hate on pink or anything but pink is like more or less a girl girl's color now pink is a very very manly color but just 
it's associated with like people think of pink as pink girls i I didn't mean to say anything stupid all right so yeah starting from the front we have basic really good detail headlights really really nice and one thing that i really like about these headlights are like okay let me have an example and i do apologize for saying that about pink pink is a very cool color i don't mean to hate it in any way i very sorry that i said that just apologize okay right so you can see for some other plastic headlights like kyosho right here so this is a pretty old kyosho model and you can see that there is a distinct black dot in the middle so that's basically where like the headlight is engraved into the casting but it just kind of ruins the whole car it, it makes the car look like it has eyeballs which looks really really strange to me and you can see for like the hobby japan one they solved that problem by printing kind of over the front and making the front not that dark which doesn't give it the sense that it has eye eyeballs which is really really just satisfying to me like i i just really hate like the like siku is a really big offender they're like a german i think german european toys company and they make that mistake all the time so yeah doesn't uh occur with the hobby japan one which is really really nice and just the whole detail like all the tempos are just not out of place they are all printed where they are supposed to be like tarmac works also released the facelifted version of this car and uh all the tempos not, not all of them but just like the tempos are just really really poorly produced like like for example we have the front black right here the black is gonna kind of like uh go out a bit and really really annoying and so that's why i didn't get a wrx i was waiting for another one right so moving on to the side pretty much the side like from the face of the version versus the non face of the version really no difference aside from like i think the arrow down here is like new but basically no difference and i really really like the wheels because they remind me of like bbs wheels but also they're stock so really really interesting and also for the rear we have kind of this uh vent right here that i don't know does anything like like w like why do you have a vent here like is it what are you cooling down like you're cooling down nothing brake out oh yeah maybe the brake calipers yeah my bad so yeah also we have pink colors right here which is a very very cool color not discriminating i make it clear I wasn't discriminating on pink. I love pink cars. I love Sam. It's pink S15. S15. So yeah, just make it clear. I'm not discriminating on pink. And I didn't mean to say what I said. Okay, right. So mirrors. The mirrors are actually really, really cool. Because, okay, so like, let me see. Like for some, let's look at this again. For some like diecast cars, the mirrors are just like, okay, Tomica. We have zero mirrors on here. Which is completely illegal. Not this this car, if it was real, would not be real legal in many ways. But one of the ways is that it doesn't have mirrors. In the Kyosho one, the mirrors are here, but the details are awful. So you can see right there. Mirrors are just black, like this black hunk right here. But for the Hobby Japan one, really pleasing to see that the mirrors actually have like reflect, like kind of like a, a reflecting surface on it. And I'm, there we go. The mirrors actually have like a reflecting service on it and just the mirrors are just really really well and you could also see where the like kind of like the blinkers go and zooming in makes me notice one thing that i didn't notice before the paint oh my god check out this paint this paint is amazing like this paint we get we have kind of like a metallic color going on like this is another this is like a kind of another th reason like, another thing that makes expensive diecast cars differ from, like, the cheap ones. Let me grab one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. I ha I have this Tomica Steel 80, and it's my made by Tomica Premium. And you see, the paint, we just have this kind of flat, flat blue. But for, like, the more expensive ones, this is uh, four times more expensive. You, you have this really, really neat hood. And just the styling overall of this WRX just makes me really, really just it looks so good like just put on some aftermarket wheels because i'm genuinely not a fan of stock cars i mean these stock wheels look amazing but i'm just not a fan of like the fact that i own a stock car like if i own a car i would need to modify it it's no matter how small so yeah, moving on to the rear we got the signature subaru wing and that is another reason why i didn't buy the hobby 
why I didn't buy the Tarmac Works one. Because they had, like, this... They, they had, like, a really specific version of this WRX that had, like, a sort of really, really tiny, terrible GT wing. And I, I'm just a fan of, like, this classic wing right here. Just, like, the GT wing is, like, the, sport, the, the support structs are, like, in the middle right here. But I like, like, these just big, just bulky wing because it just suits this car so... It just suits the rally heritage of this car so well. So yeah, the rear basically no change from the facelifted or pre-facelifted version. I mean, we have some new rear lights and that's all. And yeah, tempos are all really, really well done. The Subaru tempos are actually 3D, so you can see it, it's actually poking out a bit. It's like kind of metal plated onto there, which is really cool. And this video is already unintentionally 10 minutes long, which is crazy because... I felt like I've only, only just started speaking. So yeah, I guess we should end it right about here. So we're going to place it so that you guys could see just kind of like what, like just all the details and stuff really clearly. And is it worth it to buy this? I would say totally yes. This thing is really just details, everything, paint, wheels, everything is on point. And the only complaint that I had to make about it was that it doesn't roll really smoothly out of the factory, but I did just put some uh, skinnier tires on there so that it rolls just beautifully now. Just So just everything about this car is beautiful. So yeah, that has been this. This has been Pocket Rockets. And if you haven't done this, please do it. It really helps me out. And you can follow me on Instagram at Pocket Rockets 64 I post uh, some diecast photography. Really, really cool. Just go follow me, guys. It's going to take you like three seconds. All right. Bye.